Hello everyone and welcome to one more tutorial or lecture on Salmonella Place and today I decided to talk about genomic libraries. This is a DNA manipulation technique. It's done in vivo or as you probably know by now it's done in a living cell rather than in vitro where you use a test tube setting. And what I want to do before you look at these descriptions that uh, you can use for your notes later on, I want you to have a look at this picture so I can use it to describe, to give you the description of what a genomic library is. So if you think about, a library is built with books. So you have books where you can just grab and study them. And if you think about organisms studying biology, you want to study the genome of an organism. And you wish you could build a library where you would have the different uh, pieces of the, the genome into uh, a library where you can just grab them and study them along the way. Now, this organism has a genome, and the genome, as you probably know from biology, is your entire, or the organism's entire genetic makeup. What you do when you want to build a genomic library is you're going to restrict that genome and by restriction you know it is you're going to break that genome into fragments or pieces and then once you have those pieces of genome or DNA or nucleic acids you're going to insert them into a vector and a vector as you probably know is a nucleic acid molecule that can replicate or self-replicate in the host cell. And what will happen because the, that DNA or that nucleic acid from the genome, that fragment, is attached to this vector, once the vector is able to self-replicate, it will, of course, replicate or do another copy of that fragment. And this is what you have here. And for that reason, if you can have these pieces, all these pieces of the genome, of the organism's genome, uh, set into a vector, you're then able to create that library where you have different books and you can just grab one and study it. So this is a very simplistic way to, to look into the description of a genomic library, but I think it will clear out what I want to explain. It doesn't have to be complicated. Now, you can have a look now at what I just wrote here because, in other words, this is just another way to explain what I just told you here. Now, on this slide, I want to talk about the types of vectors used in genomic libraries, to build genomic libraries. And as you know, a vector is a nucleic acid molecule that can replicate in a host cell and of course will replicate the nucleic acid that is inserted into this vector or is attached to the vector. Now the first one on the list are called plasmids and these are circular DNA molecules and I have a picture that illustrates them. So plasmids and of course they're very easy to manipulate in the lab setting and what you can do you can cut a piece out of the plasmid and then insert the fragment that you wish to clone. Now the second type that I have here on the list, very commonly used, is lambda phages. And I also have an image that illustrate these type of viruses that infect bacteria. And lambda phages infect or use as their host E. coli. The third one that I have on the list third type of vectors are cosmids and these are syn synthetic vectors they're made created in a lab setting the other ones are adenoviruses and retroviruses and the last one that I just need to briefly mention and you probably will hear about it uh, in your classes are yeast artificial chromosome or abbreviation YAC so I have given you the description of what a genomic library was. Now I have to give you an idea of how to build one. And I'm going to use a very common technique that uses lambda phages as their vectors. 
and I have the quick steps here of how to build the recipe, let's say, of how to build a genomic library. And then this is the image that illustrates how to build one. And I'm going to go into these steps into a little bit more detail on the next slides. But for now, you have to understand that you have to do first a genomic restriction fa fragments or break the genome into pieces. Then the second thing to do is ligation with lambda arms. You're going to understand what I'm talking about on the next slides, but just have an idea of how this is going to flow. Third one is packing. Fourth, infection of E. coli cells. As I told you that lambda phages are viruses that use E. coli to, as their host cells. And then final one, screening of library. How do you actually go into the library and pick up the book that you need to study further? So as I promised, I'm going to use this image here to illustrate how to build a genomic library. And say you have a DNA molecule here. And now what you're going to do is cut a piece or a fragment of that DNA molecule. And you have here the DNA fragment. And of course, to do so, you're going to use restriction enzymes. There are able these enzymes that are able to cut the DNA into pieces. And if you have any questions of what a restriction enzyme is, then I suggest you have a look on my tutorial where I explain a little bit more on restriction endonucleases. Another thing that is going to happen here is um, that I need to tell you here is that this DNA fragment is between 15 to 20 kilobases, approximately. Now the second thing to do, the second step, is a restriction of the lambda phage DNA. And I have here the DNA, the lambda phage DNA molecule. As you know, these are viruses and of course they have DNA molecules. And what's going to happen is I'm going to restrict this 49, it's approximately 49 kilobase DNA molecule. And I'm left here with this replaceable region. This replaceable region is the region of the lambda phage DNA where I can insert or that could be replaceable that I won't need for to build this library. Now another thing that is important to say is that the other parts, this green area here, they are called the lambda phage arms. And these are important, this, these sequences are important because they code for the, the protein coat of the, or the physical structure of the lambda phage virus. So I need to keep them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the DNA fragment into these, um, these lambda phage arms. And it's a step called ligation. And I use an enzyme called ligase. And I'm going to be left with this here on the image. And this structure here, it's a recombinant. It's called a recombinant DNA molecule. In other words, a recombinant DNA molecule is a DNA molecule comprised of different pieces of DNA from different organisms, let's say. Now what's going to happen is that this is going to replicate, if I insert this into a host, they will replicate into these three uh, recombinant DNA molecules that you see here. And then further on, these uh, recombinant uh, DNA molecules are going to build this coat, protein coat and uh, there, it's, called, it's a process called packing into the lambda phage proteins or the capsids. And inside you see the recombinant DNA, lambda phage DNA, where I have the piece or the fragment of DNA that I initially have or that I initially uh, restricted. So after you're done preparing or finishing your phages, producing your phages containing the DNA fragment, you need to infect E. coli cells. So that's the other step of uh, building your genomic library. And E. coli E. coli cells infected with recombinant DNA lambda phage. As you can see here, you have your DNA 
your lambda phage containing that piece, that fragment of DNA, uh, let's say the book, uh, that you want to, to use in your library. And then you're going to insert them into, of course, they're going to infect bacteria. And I have my bacteria here, as you can see. And then what you're going to do in the lab, you're going to spread that culture, let's say, or that bacteria containing the phages or the phages into a Petri dish. And you're going to let it grow, and it's going to build this bacterial, called bacterial lawn, where you see live bacteria. And then you see these spots here, these empty spots, they're called plaque. And this is where you have areas where the phage has clearly infected and killed the bacteria. And this is each plaque corresponds to a single phage, particle infecting a single bacteria. And also the phage then multiplies and infects the neighboring bacteria, of course, creating those empty spots that you see. And you know that's where you're, the piece of DNA, that fragment, that book, is present in those spots, in that plaque. Now, after you're left with plaque, or little plaques in your bacterial lawn containing that DNA fragment. I'm gonna write here DNA fragment or your books. These DNA fragments are your books that you use to build your library. And now you want to find a way to look for them, to grab that book and study it. Now, this is a process called library screening. And the technique that you use to screen your library is called molecular hybridization. And this is how you screen for that desired fragment or desired clone or the vector, which in the case that we spoke about or did we talked about was a lambda phage containing the recombinant DNA, which contains the DNA fragment. Now, the screening steps using molecular hybridization are the following. The first thing you will do is plaque transfer, DNA denaturation, and then hybridization and autoradiography. So now I want to take you briefly over the steps on how to screen your library, how to find a book in your library. So the first thing you're going to do is transfer the plaque into a nitrocellulose filter. So those plaque, those empty spots containing the phages and the dead bacteria into a nitrocellulose filter. The second step that you're going to do is then denature. You're going to denature the DNA using heat. And what you do is you will separate the two single-stranded DNA or go from a, a double-stranded DNA molecule into two single-stranded DNA molecules that you see here. The third step is to then find a complementary sequence of DNA that will contain a probe, uh, a radioactive probe that you can then identify. And it has to be a complementary sequence to the sequence that you want to find, the book that you want to find. And that's the right I have here, the radioactive um, label or the probe or the labeled probe. Now, the fourth and last step is you want to find exactly where is your book. And then you look at the nitrocellulose filter in, in a technique called autoradiography. And what's going to happen is that your radioactive label is going to show under these conditions going to be identified and that's how you find and how you identify that book in the middle in your library so and that's where your probe is that is basically a visualization technique or identification this is how you identify your book or your fragment that specific fragment that you have in your genomic library mm -hmm.